like you Keep doing what you do Yeah, I feel like you the one Yeah, don't need nobody else Just want you for myself Yeah. Confronted with huh. pretty often. Confronted with. And that that topic is uh when y'all gonna have some babies. Hello everyone, welcome to this very special video that I've been wanting to make for you guys about my journey into pregnancy and all of that. I recently posted a video on my Instagram and I was sharing with people that I've been wanting to make this video to share my story, but what questions do you have? And shared that I've already gotten a couple questions in my DMs, like, hey, like what made you change your mind? Um, stuff like that. And I think it came off wrong. I think it came off like I felt obligated to share this story with people, maybe because I was tired when I made the video. I don't know what, but that's definitely not the case. I do not feel obligated to share any of these details with anyone. This is something I've been wanting to share with you guys. And so I just wanted to hear like, what else do you want to know? I'm probably already going to cover it in my story, but what else do you want to know? And um, I only share what I feel comfortable sharing, what I want to share, what I want the world to know. So I've been wanting to share this story because not only do I feel like it could bless somebody's life, but I, I share a lot of my life with you guys already on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram stories, in my stand-up comedy. I, I love to share what I'm comfortable with about my life with you guys. So that's why I wanted to make this video. And um, I'm already out of breath. So <laughs> that's been something that I've been learning and adjusting. But anyway, so I wanted to share my story with you guys and it's probably gonna be a really long video, but I'll go back and edit stuff out or whatever. But I just wanna get all out, get it all out and and just yeah, share with you guys. Because for a long time I did not want kids. And I meant it. Not to the point where I'm like, I wanna do something permanent about it. Like I don't want kids, take all my insides out. Nothing like that. I just was like, I don't know if kids are for me. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I'm good because I always considered my career to be my baby. My career was the thing that I nurtured, that I cared for, that I held in this pedestal, the thing that I chased after. And um, in my mind, I had all these dreams and goals and aspirations for my career. And kids always felt like a consolation prize to me. Kids felt like if, if I get pregnant and have kids, then I guess that means I didn't achieve my goals. I guess that means I didn't get my dreams. And that was my honest feeling about kids. And it all changed in 2020 during COVID. We were all home. Everybody was quarantined. The world shut down. Nobody was touring on the road and um, productions had shut down. It's not like I'm getting auditions or anything like that. And fun fact, I had already planned on taking 2020 off for my own personal reasons to realign with God, with myself, to rest. I felt very burnt out having been touring for 14, 15 years at that point. So, um, I had planned on taking a break in 2020 and then the whole world ended up taking a break with me. Um, so 2020, I'm home. I'm enjoying my life at home because I've been touring for so long. I didn't realize that I, I didn't give myself the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of my labor. You know what I mean? Like I didn't enjoy my house, my swimming pool. Like growing up, we didn't have a swimming pool. Are you kidding me? Like that was fancy. And then now I, I have a swimming pool of my own and I never use it because I'm never home. I'm always working, working, working. The next goal, the next show, we gotta sell out. Goals, goals, working, working, hustle, hustle, grind, grind. I had a beautiful balcony 
that overlooked the city that I never sat on. I didn't have any furniture out there because I never had time to go out there and enjoy it. And here we are 2020, we're all home. I buy some furniture for my patio. I end up sitting out there and like, wow, this is beautiful. This is so lovely. Why have I not done this before? I'm swimming in my pool. I built a garden in the backyard. I started learning how to grow my own vegetables. It was a different time. I was slowing down. I was being in the moment. I was enjoying Mother Earth and like, wow, I, I, was, I finally had time to be present in the moment and just be grateful. And um, in that process, I started thinking, you know what? I don't want to go back to touring like I have been hustling and grinding and I don't want to go back to that where I'm exhausted. I don't want to do that anymore. Not that I didn't want to be a stand-up anymore, but I didn't want to go back to that grind, that machine where you just go, go, go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Next, next goal. Next goal. I didn't want to go back to that. And I would be watching movies and TV shows where typically I would see something and be like, I could do that. How come I didn't get that audition? Like, what the heck? And I was watching TV and movies and I had no desire to be in them. I had no desire to be an actress at that moment. I kind of had the feeling of, if I don't book any other acting gig after this, I'm okay, I'm fine. And I never in my life thought that I would ever have that thought. And here I am thinking like, ah, my career isn't as fulfilling as I thought it was. It isn't. Um, like it's great. I'm, I'm grateful for it. I have this beautiful home because of it, but it's, it's not fulfilling because here I am saying, if I don't have it after this, I'm okay. And it was in those moments that I was like, uh Oh, did I mess up? Should I have had kids? Because everybody always tells me how having kids is so fulfilling and it's, it's a whole different thing. It's not like your career. It's not like work. It's, it's a different kind of life that I had never wanted or felt that I needed. And it was in these moments that I was actually considering it going, oh, I wonder if I should have had kids. Is it too late? I'm at this point I was like 38 and I was like, I wonder if I have any options left. Like, I don't even want to consider kids if I don't even have eggs or my body's not even capable of having kids. I had never looked into it because I had never cared. And then it started getting a little scary. I was like, oh no. Okay. So if I don't go back to the entertainment industry and hustling and grinding like I have, what, what do I do? You know? So it's in these times where I start looking into it, I start asking questions, I call my doctor and I'm like, hey, um, how do I check to see if I have any options? <laughs> like, what do we do? And from there I went and I got blood work done. And that's when they told me that all my levels were really low. My egg count was low, whatever, the hormones that I needed, all the things in my body was very low. And they were like, okay, well, if you want to do something about this, you have to hurry up. You don't have a lot of time is what they told me. So I was like, oh, okay, shoot. Well, then let's start the process of saving my eggs because I still wasn't convinced that I wanted kids, but I did want to preserve the option just in case I want kids in the future. Let's, let's save my eggs. Let's go through that process. So I had a few friends who have gone through this process before and like one of my friends, she got like 16 eggs, another friend, she got 14 eggs and I started this process and I got two eggs. That was it. Now, let me tell you about going through this process where I was at the time. We had moved from our beautiful home that we had um, after COVID 
and we were now splitting our time with Nashville and Los Angeles and we bought a smaller fixer upper home in Los Angeles and we started the remodeling process of this home but we did the timing wrong we started it too early and now we were out of the home while I was still in LA for a few months and so we were living at our friend's house they have a two-bedroom apartment with them and their dog and they let Manny and I and our dog live with them for a few months and during this process is when I was starting the IVF hormones. I have zero desire to do this. Look at that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> ah! Ah! That's where it goes? Yeah. Oh, do I do it or do you, you do it? Hurt? Oh, does it, me or you? Do you want to ice it? Should we ice it? No, too late, I'm already going. Oh, she did say push it a little bit to see some of the juice come out. Yep, there you okay. go. I'll stick it. If you want me to stick it, you want me to stick it, go straight. Just go in there, you know? Tell me if it hurts. Just tell me if it hurts. Oh my god. 90 okay. degree angle. Okay. Oh shit, I can't watch. And then just do it. Go. Can you feel it? No. Oh god, yeah, it's just a little pinch. Okay, there you go. Ready? Just do just do it. So now I'm living at someone else's house in their space that I'm very grateful to be there. But you know, when you're in somebody else's space, it's not like you can just let loose and be all the way comfortable. I'm living out of a suitcase and then I go on the road on the weekends and live out of a smaller suitcase. And then I come back to living out of a suitcase at someone else's home and I'm doing the hormone shots and I'm doing all the things. So my life at the time is not really setting me up to succeed in this process of IVF. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't think about that because I'm just doing what I do. I hustle, I grind, I work, I work. During this time, I, uh, I booked a TV show and I was very excited about this show. I had to cancel some tour dates because I was booking this show. And I flew to Atlanta. We filmed the pilot for the show, did a couple episodes, and um, I was filming that show with a very well-known comedian who is amazing, who I love dearly. And after we filmed the pilot episode, this comedian uh, realized that they work be better solo without a sidekick because I was supposed to be that person's sidekick on the show and they realized that they work better on their own without a sidekick and it made sense being on the set that day you could tell that this person is not used to you know co-working <laughs> um so I end up getting fired from the show and that was a bummer but at the same time, it was, this is the industry. This is what happens. I get it. So I'm, I'm dealing with all these emotions. I'm going on the road. I book a TV show. It's very last minute. They're filming next week. We have to cancel tour dates. We cancel tour dates. And then I'm coming home to someone else's home, living out of a suitcase and then getting the call that I'm fired from the show. Okay redirect, uh, tour dates, hormone shots. Okay, let's make it happen. And then am I really surprised that I only got two eggs out of this? So my doctors were like, um, yeah, you're gonna have to do it again. You're gonna have to try it one more time. So I plan to do it again a second time. During this IVF process, you know, you do ultrasounds and, and things like that. And in those ultrasounds, we, we found out that I have fibroids. I knew I had fibroids for years and years, but I, I thought they were like this big. And then it turns out they had grown and they were huge fibroids in my uterus and they were in positions that would prohibit me from getting pregnant if I ever decided I wanted to get pregnant. So they were like, you definitely need to get those removed. 
typically we could just do that in the office here, but where they're positioned, I'm going to send you to a specialist. So then they send me to a specialist and then she's looking at my ultrasound and was like, yeah, I don't think I can do this either. I'm going to need you to get an MRI. So then they send me to go get an MRI, which I don't know if you've ever had an MRI. It is awful. It is so scary. I did not realize that I was claustrophobic until this moment when they started putting me in the machine and I started freaking out and I couldn't breathe. They had to bring me back out. I'm pushing the button like, get me out. I can't, I can't. I did not know that was me and that's me apparently. So anybody who has had MRIs, you know, that's not fun. So I do the MRI and they're like, yep, you have fibroids that need to be surgically removed via myomectomy. So now I'm scheduling the surgery and this is all in 2022, the beginning of 2022. And it's looking to be a very busy year for me. I have my book is about to launch. My big tour is about to launch. And now I have to get this surgery that is gonna be, you know, some recovery time in this surgery. Thankfully, I get my surgery scheduled before my tour starts. And before my surgery, we decided to do IVF one more time. Let's see how many eggs we can get this time. So I did IVF again, and this time I got four eggs. So still not a great number, but it's better than two. And now I have a total of six eggs. And during this process, the more I was getting negative feedback from the doctors that were like, oh, it's not what we were hoping for. Oh, it's not great. Um, it's still possible, but not great. The more I was getting news like that, that um, this may not be an option for me, the more I wanted it. The more I felt the realization of I do want children and um, in my mind and my heart during this process is when the switch happened for me of I'm not just trying to save my eggs at this point I'm trying to have children so we do the IVF again I get my four eggs now I have a total of six from the two before and these four and now we decide we're going to fertilize them. We're not going to freeze them. We're going to fertilize them. And when we first started this process, my husband, Manny, and I, we both got tested to see if, you know, we're a good match to have kids chromosomally. Chromosom chromosomally. You know what I mean. And everything was great. They test his sperm count, make sure he has sperm, make sure they have good mobility and fantastic, like billion count, fantastic mobility. He's ready to go. Yeah, this is so freaking weird. <laughs> what? What is it like in there, lover? It's a damn doctor's office. And I kept getting nervous because I, I kept hearing um, doors open and close, and I kept thinking it was my door that somebody was trying to get in. So it was messing me up. I put my AirPods, AirPods on with noise cancellation. What, is it was just use your own phone type of situation? No, they had a computer and, and whatever, and I'm like, oh, wait. But then you can see my search? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that was in the beginning when we first started this process. Then we go to fertilize our six eggs. And it was during that time that our doctor calls us and was like, hey, something's going on. Manny went from billion sperm count to zero sperm count, like nothing. And we're like, wait, how is that even possible? So it's not like there was like sperm, but they weren't moving. There was nothing there. We're like, how is that possible? Well, he had to go to a specialist and all of that, come to find out. Manny was on these testosterone pellets, the supplement that was helping his sleep, his um, stamina, his, his working out, his everything. Like it was helping him 
but at the same time, we didn't realize that when you put in a synthetic testosterone or it, his was from like yams or something. When you put in a supplement that is not created from your body, it was telling his body, I got this, we're good. And his testosterone is what makes the sperm. So his testosterone had sh cooled off because he had the synthetic version. And so he wasn't producing sperm and we had no idea. So now we don't get to fertilize the eggs. Now we're, we're on pause with that process until we figure out what was happening with Manny. And that took a few months to figure out. During this time, I'm having my surgery. And I posted about it on Instagram. I didn't say like what exactly it was for, um, but I just said, you know, I have this big surgery and so many people responded praying for me and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you so much. And in that process, they were going to take out my fibroids. And when they went in to take my fibroids out, they realized I had endometriosis everywhere in my body. A very severe case of endometriosis. This surgery was supposed to be four hours and it was about eight hours long because they had to do so much work inside my body, surgically removing parts of my body to scrape out endometriosis and sew it back together. Like it was pretty intense. Man, he's on his way to come pick me up. It's like in the two o'clock hour, in the middle of the night. I don't want to stay here. And Manny's going to pick me up, take me home. Also, it's really expensive to stay the way at the hospital. You can take the hood out the girl a bit, but you can't take the... Huh? You can take the girl out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the girl, you know what I'm saying? Do y'all got a coupon? You got a coupon so I can spend a night here, no? Y'all want two coupons? Okay, I'm gonna need you to call my husband and take me home. I'm so tired, but I'm trying to pretend to be alert so that I can go home. Okay, good night. And that was the beginning of March. I think my surgery was like March 7th or something. And then my book launched March 15th and my tour launched March 25th. So I went from having this intense internal experience, dealing with the emotions of my husband is not able to fertilize these eggs. What if it doesn't come back? What if it doesn't happen for us? And then my book comes out. I'm so excited about it. My tour is launched. I'm doing like 80 cities on this tour. It was a lot. And um, the healing process internally was about four months. That's what they told me. It's going to take your body inside about four months to come back to normal. And externally, I wasn't able to work out and exercise like I was used to. So I'm on tour, I'm on the road, I'm eating all the late night food after shows, just like living, drinks, honey, yes. And kind of just, you know, getting a little comfortable, get a little fluffy fluff and enjoy my life. And, you know, I, I remember like posting videos and seeing comments from people like, oh, is she pregnant? Like. No, nah, just enjoy life. <laughs> um, and so I'm on tour during this time. My husband's going to the specialist. We figure out it's the testosterone thing. About three or four months later, he gets his sperm back. We fertilize the eggs. We're like, hey, we end up getting four embryos. And from that, you send them off to testing. And they, they test them to make sure all the chromosomes are there make sure everything's healthy and good and, and all of that. And so in the meantime, I'm on the road, I'm on tour. And I remember I get the call. We're on a road trip. I think we were driving from Reading back to 
San Jose or LA or somewhere. We were driving back to the Bay and I got the phone call from my doctor that none of the embryos were viable. They were all no boy no. So we needed to start over from scratch. Had to do the IVF again to try to get eggs. And the first time I only got two, the second time I only got four, I'm like, oh my gosh, how many more times am I gonna have to do this? When am I gonna do this? Because I'm on tour, I'm working, my time is running out, my literal inside clock is running out. When am I gonna do this? It was very disappointing and discouraging, but it, I was like, you know what? This is during the summertime. I was like, I have a break in November. I have my last show in Las Vegas, November 11th. And then I have like a month off. So I'll do it in that time. Try the IVF again, maybe because I'll be resting and not on tour. Maybe I'll get more eggs this time. Maybe I'll only have to do it one time. So that was the plan. It's now, it's currently, we're in the summertime. I'm planning to do IVF again in November. Let me just finish this tour strong. At the same time, we're planning to film my sixth hour special in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ryman. And I'm producing it myself for the first time, like a big production. And um, I decided that I wanted to really prepare my body for this special and my mind, my heart, my soul, everything. I wanted to gear up for this. I'm on the, I'm on the road, I'm doing back-to-back -back shows, I'm getting this hour so tight. This hour of material is so fire, it's so ready, and I wanted the whole package. I wanted to be healthy, mind, body, spirit. So I made the decision to start working out again. I, I stopped eating late night junk food. I said no more alcohol until my taping and I'm gonna get it right, get it tight. And so that's what I did. I started working out more. I was going to the gym at the hotels even when I was tired. I was doing my home videos, my Pilates videos when I was home. Um, I was going to the gym um, with my trainer when I was in LA and I was, I was getting my body prepared for this special. And by the time October 1st came when I was taping this special, I felt so good. Mind, body, spirit. I was fit, I was healthy, I was in like the best shape that I had been in in so long. Um, I was so uh, happy with my hour of material where I was with it. It was incredible, I was ready. And I knew Manny and I were gonna do the IVF again in November. But in the meantime, now that we knew that his sperm was back, we were trying naturally to get pregnant as well, which is so funny to me because I have that joke where I talk about, I hate it when people say that they're trying to have a baby because they would, are you just bragging? You know what I mean? You just want us to know that you're doing it. I think it's funny how married couples like to tell you when they're trying to have a baby. That's just gross. <laughs> like, are they just showing off? They just want you to know they're doing it. It's like, hey, do you guys have any kids yet? No, but we're trying. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Um, and then here I am telling you guys all that we were trying. And uh, I was doing my ovulation test to figure out when am I ovulating and timing it all out and sometimes our timing didn't work because I was on tour, I was on the road. I'm like, okay, I'm ovulating, but I won't even see my husband for like three more days. So I guess it's not gonna happen this time. Anyway, doing the timing of the ovulation test that I was using and um, before my taping on October 1st, I was ovulating, so my husband and I, we did the do. <laughs> um, it's so funny, kind of like in the movies and the TV shows, 
when they're trying to have a baby and they're like, all right, let's go. And so like we would quote friends all the time. All right, Bing, get in there with Monica and Chandler. Okay, it's baby time. Pants off, Bing. <laughs> Didn't see you there, Geller. <laughs> and um, I end up doing my taping October 1st. It was incredible, amazing, lovely. After the show, we have an after party. We're celebrating. Hey, it was sponsored with tequila. Hey. Um, had an incredible opportunity after that to go to the White House with the Poderistas group, a bunch of Latinas. We went to DC. We're living it up in DC. Um, I'm going back on the road after my taping. And then all of a sudden, I was late for my period. And I'm like, that's interesting. Because ever since I had my surgery earlier this year, I've been very on time, very clockwork with my period. And I have an app where I watch it and I went back months and months and I'm like, yeah, I'm when I, when my app says I'm gonna start a period, I start a period, like either that day or the next day. And I was like one day late at this point. So I was like, that's weird, but not too weird because just one day, but it is a little bit weird. I started thinking to myself, what if I'm pregnant? Nah, I'm not pregnant. But what if I am? I was like, I'm gonna journal about this because I am an avid journaler. I love to journal. I love to go back over my journals of years past and see all the things that I've been through, overcome, experienced, all of that. So I'm like, I'm gonna journal. And then my journal pages had run out. It was all full. I didn't have no journal. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just talk to God and journal out loud to God. And I'm, I'm starting to like process and be like, hey, what if I'm pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. But if I am, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I start doing all the things. And, but then I also try to like keep it at bay. Like don't get too excited. Like, nah, you're probably not pregnant. You're just, it's whatever. Cause I was still cramping. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my period any day. I was having cramps. So I was like, I'm gonna start my period any day, it's nothing. And then the next day, Still don't start my period. I'm like, hmm, that's weird, but I'm still cramping. I'm gonna start any day. And then I go back on the road. And at this point, I'm doing like Atlanta, Louisville, Dayton. Like we're going city to city to city. And then by, oh, like the night before I left on the road, I remember um, I got up to pee in the middle of the night and I had to pee real bad. And I was like, whoa, what the heck? And I ran to the bathroom and I had to pee and I ended up peeing twice that night. And I had like this weird, like sharp pain. And I remember the next morning telling Manny like, baby, it was so weird. I had to pee like real bad last night, like twice I had to get up and pee. That's not normal. That's marriage, you, you talk about things like that. Like just like I had to pee last night. That's weird, huh? Um, so I go on the road. I'm in Atlanta, it's like day three or four now. I still haven't started my period. I'm like, that's freaking weird, what the heck? Then we go to the next city and the next city. Now I am in Dayton, Ohio. And we're staying in this beautiful Airbnb. We have the show that night, it's a great show. And I remember being on stage and I was like a little winded on stage. And I was like, is it high elevation in Dayton, Ohio? Why, why am I having trouble breathing? What the heck? And then we get back to the Airbnb. They got us a bottle of Prosecco. And I was like, hey, Prosecco. And I was like, wait, should I not drink this? What if I'm pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. I'm still cramping. I'm about to start my period. But what if I am? Maybe I shouldn't drink it. I don't want to not drink it because then Danielle and Neri are going to know if I'm not drinking a Prosecco, they'll be like, why are you not drinking a Prosecco? So I was like, oh my God, do I drink it? Do I not drink it? Am I pregnant? Am I not pregnant? Keep in mind, every single one of these nights that I'm late, um, I have to pee so bad in the middle of the night. I get up to pee like two or three times a night. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I'm still cramping. 
So every time I get up to pee, I'm like, oh, this is it. I started my period. And I run to the bathroom and I go, oh, no, didn't start my period. That's weird. So now Dayton, Ohio is done. We wake up the next day and I'm like, okay, when I get home, I'm going to take a pregnancy test because I have a pregnancy test in my drawer at home. And people have asked me like, why didn't you take it when you were on the road? What am I going to do? Like have one of the runners at the venue go get me a pregnancy test? You know what I mean? Like during sound check, be like, um, yeah, can we make the lights a little brighter? I need more monitor. Can you get me a pregnancy test? Um, no, I'm not going to do that. So I'm like, when I get home, I'm gonna take a pregnancy test. And on this particular trip, I was flying from Dayton back to LA. I had 10 hours from landing at LAX to go home, do my laundry, repack my suitcase, go back to LAX the next morning at 7 a.m. for a flight to Hawaii to go do my Hawaii shows. So I land at LAX, I go home. Manny's already on his way to Hawaii. So it's just me at the house, me and Bonzo. I take my pregnancy test and I'm, I'm recording this whole process. I'm recording it I because I'm like, what if I am, what if I'm not, I don't know. Let me just put up my camera. And I'm documenting all my feelings that I'm feeling like, you know, I, I peed in the cup, I dipped a little thing, and I'm waiting for it. You have to wait for like eight minutes or something. And I'm trying to keep myself busy. I'm doing my laundry, I'm packing, getting ready to go back to the airport, processing out loud, okay, if I am, my life is gonna change forever. If I'm not, then why haven't I started my period? Like, what, then I start Googling. Like, okay, what other reasons would you not start your period if you're not pregnant? And they're like, oh, you're 40, perimenopause. I'm like, oh my God, no, please God, no. So all these thoughts going through my head. And finally, I'm like, okay, it's been five minutes. I'm going to look at my test. And if I'm pregnant, my life is going to change forever. If I'm not pregnant, what the heck? And I look at the test, and it says I'm pregnant. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I was in shock. My heart started beating so fast. I didn't know if I was reading the test correctly. Like I'm doubting everything. Like I got the wind knocked out of me. My heart is beating fast. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I, I don't think I'm reading this right. Hold on, hold on. I had taken two tests and they both said pregnant. And I was like, okay, wait. Um, I remembered I had another test because these were like just little strips that had pink lines or no pink lines. Then I remembered I had a clear blue test that actually says pregnant or not pregnant. Like you can't really get that messed up. So I was like, okay, let me do that clear blue one. So I did the clear blue one, boom, pregnant. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? I don't know anything. Who do I call? What do I do? And I'm like freaking out, but then I'm like, I don't have time to freak out. I have to pack my suitcase and go back to the airport. So it's just me and Bonzo and I'm like, son, I'm pregnant. What do I do? And I'm like freaking out. I can't even call Manny cause he's on the plane on the way to Hawaii, but I don't even think I would call him. I wouldn't tell him that on the phone. So it's basically just me, my own thoughts, me and God, me and Bonzo processing this, realizing Oh my gosh. And that's, I would be like packing my suitcase and then I'd be like, oh my God, what do I do? I don't have time to freak out. I got to pack my suitcase. And then I finish packing. Next morning I fly to Hawaii. I tell Manny when I get there in the hotel room, he's shocked. We're both shocked. Like we're happy, but very shocked. And he's like, what, it actually worked? Like, wild. My mom and my sister are there with me in Hawaii. I'm able to share with them. They're able to be such a great support system for me throughout my first trimester when, you know, we're keeping everything secret and, and all of that. Um, yeah, and while I was in Hawaii, I was very disappointed that I could not have poke, all the raw fish, no cocktails, no nothing. Um, 
this new life that I was starting to live. Um, I remember, you know, you're in Hawaii, you want to like celebrate, live it up. And Mal was with us in Hawaii doing the shows. And we always talk about, oh, we're going to get drinks after whatever. I was like, oh yeah, I'm not drinking right now. <laughs> I had to make up this whole lie. I was like, yeah, you know, ever since my taping, I've just been letting myself go and I don't like the way I feel. So I'm doing no alcohol till New Year's. Like I gave it a goal because if I have a goal, Mal's not going to want me to break my goal. But if I just say I'm not drinking, then he's going to every five minutes, let's go get a drink. But I told him I have a goal. It's till New Year's Eve. And he's like, okay, well, just start after Hawaii. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm starting now. He's like, what the heck? Just start after Hawaii. And I was like, no, bro, I'm starting now. And then I told him months later why I couldn't drink in Hawaii. But so that is my story of my journey from going from not wanting kids to deciding that I wanted kids to getting pregnant, going through the whole IVF process, the ups and downs of that very emotional journey. And um, I am now pregnant with a little baby in here. I am currently at the time of this video, 18 weeks. I'm in my second trimester. Things are going great. First trimester was difficult. I didn't throw up, thank God. I was very nauseous every day. It's not morning sickness, it's all day sickness. And I was nauseous every day. I was exhausted. I couldn't accomplish any task. Um, I have acid reflux and indigestion. Whole first trimester. Oh my God, it was the worst. Anything I ate, reflux indigestion, burping all day. Like I'm already a burpy girl, but first trimester, I can't. I've already burped like 17 times through this video. I don't know if you've caught it or not, but first trimester, oh, I could not eat anything without just burping. And like, I had to sleep sitting up basically because it was so bad. Anyway, so that's my story. I'm so grateful for anybody who is interested and wanted to hear the story and for everybody who asked questions I'm gonna answer some of those questions that you guys had for me so this whole pregnancy I have been very open to both a boy and a girl I feel like I would be a really good boy mom because I'm already kind of tomboy you know um, I love my nephew and I was like I would be a really good boy mom but then Manny wants a girl. So then there's also part of me that's like, I want to see Manny as a girl dad, especially because I know he already wants to be a girl dad. So then I'm like, oh, okay, then I want a girl. But then I'm like, oh my gosh, but I want a boy. And then sometimes like I'll be in an elevator and I'll see like a cute little baby boy in like a little sweatsuit with Jordans. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to have a cute little boy. Um, but then I'm like, how cute would that be to have a little me running around? So very open to both boy and girl. So I haven't had any weird cravings yet. I always eat pickles all the time. So I know that's a big like craving from the movies. Like, oh, she's craving pickles. I'm always craving pickles. Um, so that's nothing new. But I will say though, first trimester, I wanted dairy milk, like full whole vitamin D milk. Don't give me 2%, don't give me oat milk, don't give me coconut, nothing. I need a cow in my cup. Um, and cereal, I was eating a lot of cereal. Um, because I was nauseous, I, I didn't have an appetite for much. So the only thing that felt good was like cold milk in a bowl of cereal. And now, sugar. I'm not a sweet tooth normally. I don't save room for dessert. I'm like, just give me two more tacos. You know what I mean? Manny is a sweet tooth. I'm definitely pregnant with his child. I want cake, cookies, all the things sugar. Can I bought candy. 
of a story that I never buy candy. I bought two bags of candy just for funsies. So sugar has been a thing for me. This is a very good question. Um, yes, Thea Mary did get to hear my news before she passed away. I went to visit her in her home, her senior home that she was living in, in her final days. And um, she was in her wheelchair and she was just kind of like out of it, you know. And I came in and I was like, hola. That's what I would say to her every time I would come see her. And she would open her eyes and she goes, Angela. And then goes back to sleep. And so I was just talking to her and I would sing to her. And you know, her eyes were closed mostly. And then I said to her, I go, Dear Mary, I have a secret. And she goes, what? And I go, can you keep a secret? And she goes, what is it? And I go, I'm pregnant. And she didn't say anything. She just mouthed with her words. She goes, And that was it. And I turned to my mom and I was like, I think she heard me. I think she got it. Um, I kind of think that she was blessing me because in her final days, she kept blessing people. Anybody who would come visit her, she would like do the sign of the cross and, and bless them. And then sometimes she just had energy to like lift up her hand and put it back down. Or she would just like mouth with her, her mouth just like that. So I feel like she was blessing me in that time. Um, and then also there's part of me cause she knew that I didn't want kids. So then part of me was like, maybe she's confused and it's like, wait, I thought this was Angela. Hold on. <laughs> um, but she did find out before she passed on. And, um, I think she was waiting for that and then transitioned on. When I think of a mini me, who do I think of? Um, when I was young, like toddler, I was a little chonky baby. And my mom says that I was very friendly and I would go up to strangers and hug strangers. And um, then I went through this very shy period and I learned about this thing called anxiety. And um, I, I went through this whole season but also, my parents were getting divorced at the time, like I was young, it was a whole different situation. So when I think of having a little me, I hope that this child has that same love for people that I had and that I have. I hope that this child is very friendly, kind of like my dog, to be honest. My dog will walk up to strangers, will sit in strangers' laps, and just like, he knows how to exude love and allow people to feel that love, like a therapy dog. Not that I want my child to go sit in strangers' laps. I'm not saying that. But I would love for my child to exude that same type of love for all people for strangers. So that's what I think of when I think of a little me running around. And um, yeah. Currently my husband and I split time between Los Angeles and Nashville. And we will have two nurseries, Nashville and LA. And yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. Where our plan is to split our time and we go kind of based on my tour dates. Wherever I'm touring, if I'm on the West Coast, we stay in LA. If I'm in the middle to the East, we stay in Nashville. And we plan on keeping that. Again, once a child gets in the mix, everything changes. So we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I don't have any kids currently. I've talked about that a lot, but sometimes people who have not been following me for a long time 
and don't know that about me are confused when I post pictures or videos of my godson or any of my friends' kids. And recently I did a post with a friend of mine, Leo Gonzalez, who we, we did a video for his YouTube channel and then we took a picture and in the picture, I look like I'm his mom sending him off to college. So I jokingly said, you know, just a proud mom sending her son off to college and tagged him. And so many people thought that was real. And they were like, oh my gosh, congratulations. You must be so proud. <laughs> I didn't know you had kids, wow. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? No, I was kidding. Obvi? Um, but a lot of people didn't catch that. So that might be the post <laughs> she's talking about. I don't have too many concerns about having a child in my 40s. Although, if you read lots of articles and statistics and books, sure, you can come up with a lot of concerns. But I feel like where I'm at in my life is I'm trusting the process. I'm trusting that everything's gonna be great, that I'm doing my part, um, getting my body healthy and prepared to get pregnant really helped. I was making healthy choices, eating a lot of salmon and taking vitamins and um, not drinking alcohol, exercising. I was taking care of my body to get pregnant. And now during this pregnancy, I'm trying to do the same. I'm trying to exercise, trying to eat healthy, even though it's harder now that I'm craving sugars and things like that. But um, I am just trusting God. I'm trusting the process. I know plenty of women who have had children in their 40s and they have very healthy, beautiful children. So I'm just kind of operating in that place of I'm right where I'm supposed to be and I'm going to bring in a beautiful, healthy baby into this world. Bonzo is my little sidekick. He's always right on top of me. I'm actually surprised he didn't jump up here with me, but he's currently on the couch right behind me or behind you. Um, so people have asked like, oh, has become has he become more attached to you? And I'm like, oh my God, he's already so attached. I don't think he could be more attached to me. So I haven't noticed anything from Bonzo other than he does like to sit right on top of me. And I'm like, oh, I can't breathe. Um, I did notice my friend's dog started acting different with me. My friends, Brandon and Maddie, they have a dog named Blue. And I went to their house and his behavior towards me, he never acted like this. He was following me throughout the house. When I sat down, he would sit down right next to me. He was licking me, giving me all the kisses. And I was like, you are being so lover boy today. Like what is going on? And then Maddie was like, yeah, typically Blue would put himself to sleep by now. He goes into the room around this time and just lays in his bed and goes to bed whenever he wants. But he's not doing that. He's just staying right by you. And I was like, oh, I think he knows I'm pregnant. I think that's what's happening here. So I haven't noticed a big change in Bonzo because he's already on my jock all the time. But Blue, I did notice with Blue and I thought that was very sweet. Manny and I are doing great through this process. It's so much to learn and can sometimes be overwhelming, but I think we're both doing a good job of staying in the moment, being um, excited and preparing. Um, I feel like I am more in my emotions and Manny is more in his logical brain and he's preparing like physically like, okay, Financially, what do we gotta do? You know, we gotta sell this, we gotta move this, and like all that kind of stuff. And then I'm more like, mm, feel, oh my gosh, maybe, you know. So um, we're both preparing in different ways. My mom is very excited to bring in another grandbaby and she only has one, Austin, and he's nine. So it's been a long time. And I don't 
think, I think she hoped from me. I don't know if she ever thought she would get a grandbaby from me. Um, but she's very excited. My mother-in-law is so excited. I mean, she, my mother-in-law would ask me throughout the years. She wouldn't hound me about it. She would just ask me every now and then and be like, Angela, you don't want no kids? You don't want no babies? Every now and then she would ask me that. And I'd be like, no, I'm good. So when we surprised her, oh, she was very happy. What are my fears? Um, the unknown, really. We are aware that our lives are about to change majorly, but we don't know what that looks like. So that's kind of scary. Um, keeping a baby alive, that is also scary. Um, I would say the unknown is the scariest part. It's the most exciting part and also the scariest part. First trimester, I had a very cool dream that I'm not sure exactly what it means. I talked to my friend Brandon who interprets dreams about it. It was like me as a child in my childhood home and um, the driveway all of a sudden was a road leading this way and it felt very symbolic and it felt like it definitely meant something important. Um, that was the only like real dream that I had first trimester. Second trimester? Let me tell you, I've been having some wild dreams. I talked about it on my Instagram stories. I had a dream about Kobe Bryant. Um, I, I'm <laughs> either I don't have a dream at all or it's just very out there. So yes, I have had dreams. I haven't remembered like the specifics of them. So I don't feel like if I don't remember it, then I don't think it means anything. Um, but I do enjoy dreaming. I enjoy waking up the next day going, oh wait, what happened? Oh yeah. And then I'll like jot it down. I'll journal about it and stuff like that. So I hope I have more pregnancy dreams. I do. I fully plan on having Bonzo near the baby for sure. I know people who have different school of thought on that. Um, I have friends who didn't let their dog near the baby for like the first few weeks. Um, I have another friend who she said once she had her baby, she didn't want her dogs near the baby. It was like, nope, not even allowed in the room. For me, I feel like I would want Bonzo to be near the baby. I think it's so important growing up with animals and pets. I grew up with so many pets, cats, dogs, rabbits, turtles. Um, I definitely want Bonzo to be a part. And also because Bonzo's already like a therapy dog. He's already very intuitive. And um, I think he'll be a very good companion for my child. I am very open to receiving advice from people and learning how other people raise their children, parent their children. And I'm very aware that not everything is for me. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's childhood was different. So they're gonna raise their kid different. Um, but I'm interested to see and learn how other people do it so I can go, oh, that's good. I'm gonna try that. Oh, I'm definitely not doing that. Uh, you know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm open to learning how other people do things. I think when people try to put it on you, like this is the way you have to do it, then that's when it's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm open to learning what, how everybody does things. Am I gonna tour with a baby? I don't know. I have no idea what it's gonna be like when I go back on tour. And I've seen people do both. I've seen people, they leave the baby home, they go for the weekend, they come back. Um, I have friends who tour with their children. They have three kids and they get on the tour bus and they just bring the whole family. So I'm sure there'll be times when I just go by myself and times when here's the baby. So it'll be a learning. This whole journey is gonna be a learning experience for me. My mental health is doing very well, actually. 
I had one day of anxiety and I think it was from something I ate. I don't know how that's possible, but I honestly, all of a sudden my heart was beating so fast. I was feeling lightheaded. I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Um, but I've been doing really well and feeling very excited, very happy. Um, I'm doing very well. Thank you. What has surprised me about pregnancy? Um, watching my body change has been interesting. I enjoy it. I enjoy watching my belly grow. My boobs are freaking huge right now. It's like, it's a whole, whole thing. But it's also like, like it's beautiful. And I'm coming from, I have been petite my whole life this skinny little girl, chicken legs, chicken arms, never had meat on my bones. Like I always wanted to like have a booty. I never had a booty. I was like just this skinny little thing running around. And I thought to myself, I wonder if it's gonna be difficult seeing my body grow, seeing the number on the scale rise i wonder if that's going to be difficult for me and so far i've enjoyed it i've felt proud of myself i have felt like um i feel beautiful it's weird like it's so cool seeing my body do these things and i I, I feel good in it. Now I'm sure when I get to like third trimester and coming towards the end, when I hear all my other friends that have been like, oh my gosh, get this baby out of me. Like I'm tired of being pregnant. And you start swelling and your feet and your cankles and your leg, like everything is just one long piece of body. And I'm sure when I get to that place, I might not feel the same way, um, but right now I feel very good about watching my body go through all these changes. What can my fans do to help? Honestly, I've enjoyed reading DMs from people with suggestions of, um, oh, check out this baby carrier. Oh, look at this account. This, this mom always posts information that I found super helpful. I've been enjoying that and I've been taking advice from people. And you know, of course some messages come in, I'm like, okay, not for me, but thank you so much. But then there's other times where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna look that up. That actually looks like it's right up my alley. Um, so I would say, excuse me, I had to burp again. Um, <laughs> I would say what my fans can do is just share with me what worked for you, what helped you um whatever resources you have i would love to learn oh contraire <laughs> manny is not more private than i am he is actually the one that's like let's do a reality show let's like <laughs> i'm like no uh over the years of our marriage he's been very open to like reality shows and things like that and i'm like i don't know like i like to share what i feel comfortable sharing so I put out on my Instagram stories what I wanna put on my Instagram stories. I talk about my standup, what I wanna talk about in my standup. And anytime I talk about Manny and my standup, he is well aware, he knows, he's pitching me ideas. So please don't feel bad for Manny, okay? Um, but no, Manny is not more private than I am. He doesn't care that much. Like sometimes I'm like, babe, that can you not say that part on the camera? Thanks. Um, like Manny would put cameras around the house on a live feed if he could, like, no. Um, so Manny is great with me making this video. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Will the baby be a Raiders fan? I mean, of course, we'll start that way. Um, forever Raiders fan, but you know, I'm from the Bay. So if the Raiders are not in the playoffs and the 49ers are, Niner gang. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. But yeah, we'll, 
we'll be a Raider fan family for sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. I wanted to share my story with you, share the details of how I got to this point in my journey. I hope that something of what I shared with you today blesses someone in some way. And if not, thanks for just following me on this journey. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm very grateful that God has blessed me with the ability to change my mind, the opportunity to follow through with that. Um, I'm very grateful and I'm looking forward to how my life is gonna change in the future. So thanks for tuning in. I'll, I'm sure I'll be sharing more videos with you guys along this process. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and do all the things that we do on YouTube so you can see all my future videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, what a cute boy. Hi, Shine. Are you so cute and sad? Are you just a cute and baby head? Oh, look at this baby croissant. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna be the best big brother in the world, Shane? Are you? I love you. <laughs>